Well, let's go to my first question. It's from Melinda Reeves, and she asked, if you have a storage locker, why do you keep these large bins in front of your door? It seems like it would be easier to get in and out of your van if you didn't have them there. She's speaking of these one, two, and then there's a big one down here. Well, Melinda, there are things in these bins that I need to keep with me at all times. Yeah, you can't just, I, I don't want to run to my storage every time I want to get dressed. There's things in here that I use to, for, you know, for my accessories and things like that. And, and down here, there's like some wipes and things that, no, I want these with me at all times. Now, if you remember, we did not get a storage. We're in Flagstaff. It's um, NAU um, College Town. Well, what they do is the students, when they're going to come back, but they put everything in storage, obviously. So the prices are high, uh, double what they were in Tucson, even though Tucson is a college town, a much larger college town, the U of A, yay, Bear Down Wildcats, if you're, that's my alma mater. Well, <laughs> so, but wouldn't it, it, it would seem to me that it would, might be a good idea to maybe get some more storage in Flagstaff, Flagstaff, <laughs> get some more. There literally was only one of it. I called all around and there were hardly any available and they were uber expensive. So no, so we don't have a storage. So we've had to, I've had to integrate things. We did donate um, most of our canned goods and almost all of our dry goods. We donated them um, to Salvation Army. So yeah, there we go. I mean, Paul couldn't keep traveling around with all of that. And we're just going to deal with what we have. So, no, I wouldn't. No, when I'm out boondocking, I take these three bins and I'll set them out on a tarp. If we're out camping, and I can do that. Maybe put some bug spray around it. I know you guys are, oh, don't use bug spray. Well, I'm going to, so there you go. I don't want bugs crawling in here. Um, you try to use natural things, but I just, I'm not spraying that much. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I already know, you know, what, what you, what some of you are going to say. So that's why I go with that. Oh, I'm going to use bug spray. So don't tell me not to. <laughs> and then she continues on Melinda. She says, wouldn't it be easier to live in your van if you built a bed and had storage under it? That way you're not sitting on the floor all the time, which I love. And you wouldn't have to get your bed out every night and put it away every morning. I don't mind doing that. This is my space. I love my space. Oh my gosh. This is, I love sitting on the floor. This is, this is my clubhouse. I'm a kid at heart. I don't care. I love sitting on the floor. It's really comfortable. Heart services. Okay. Here's, here's the dealio too. I will tell you, I was sort of a futon kind of person. And in my living room, I had a futon. I had a couch and a chair, but I also had a futon on the ground. And I spent more time on that than I did on the couch or the chair. But I will tell you that when you're getting up from a futon or getting out, I have to get up out of here and climb out. It keeps me agile. It keeps me young. And um, I've, I've discussed this with my daughter. She's used futons too. She's like, you know, this is keeping us young. We have to get up. How many older people, they get stiff. All they have to do is they sit in the chair all day with their feet down, butt, and then the back up. And they just kind of push up a little bit. And then they even have those chairs that help you pull up. You push a button and it moves up. Dude, we got to use our bodies. It's okay. Um, I guess I'm more just more of an American Indian type of person. I love to just sit. And that's the way they did in their teepees. They were very agile and they got lots of exercise. So that's why, Melinda, I want it this way. I had a friend just tell me that, um, or I met her, and she said that she had, her son did a build-out bed, and she called him later and said, tear this out, I can't stand it. Some people can't stand it. It's just, it's so confining when it's, it's like you have no space. My bed would come out to here. So I would have this, I'd have to, where do, what do I do? Sit on my bed all day? No, I like to move around. I can even exercise here. I can, yeah, I can do my stretching. No, this is what I like. And I will mention there are all, and I know you know this, but there are all types of people out there in this world. 
all different types of personalities with the we have different not only in differences in age in in sex um but we have different um we just have different personalities different parents that, that we grew up with different experiences in life this is what i like i've seen build outs and i have friends who have build outs okay but for moi, <laughs> this is what I like. Okay, so thank you, Melinda. I think there's a little bit, it seems like that would cause more work than needed. No, it's not, you know, no, no. Um, van life should be less stressful and not so much work, just my opinion. Okay, Melinda, I mean, you're, you're going to do what you wanna do. I have a friend who has a build out and everything ends up on his bed. Do you know how much work that is for him to actually get to bed? It's not always that easy because uh, a lot of people pile stuff on their bed. So, you know, um, come see, come saw, you know, Mox Nix is all just uh, evens out, right? Okay, so let's go to another letter. Okay. Thank you. Oh, this one's a good one. Thank you for doing a video that is more everyday life. That was um, the video on um, how I handle the nighttime being a nomad. And I really want, I wanted to pick this one because I wanted to address this. While I enjoy your channel, I was getting turned off by the drama videos that were doom and gloom. Those make me feel like you are more focused on building your channel with shocking titles and shocking content versus connecting with your followers about everyday life. Well, that's not really true. Actually, sometimes those type of videos bring in more audience, seriously. I mean, I want to grow, right? I do want to grow. But I'm gonna tell you, they're not doom and gloom. They're not doom and gloom. And you can you can leave in comments and say, yes, they are, and you know what I'm gonna say? No, they're not. Oh, I'll argue it. No, they really, things are happening right now, and most of us know it. But I'm gonna tell you, there'll be more down the road. I don't care. I am not gonna talk about the same things all the time. I have to talk about things that excite me too. And I'm not, I always take a positive spin on if you didn't watch the video, then shame on you for mentioning that, that it was doom and gloom because it wasn't. I was telling you what was going on and I was telling you how to prepare and I was, I took it in a positive spin like I always do. So I'm just warning you all, oh, I mean, there's gonna be more down the road. I'm not just gonna, I, if you know my channel and I think a lot of you already do, there's this, I go through a cycle and yes, Right now I'm talking about, oh, van life and things, but then I start talking about, well, let's do cooking. I could get so bored if that's all I talked about. And I've had people tell me that they are so bored with some of these nomad channels. They're just the same thing, rotating over and over and over. Look, I like to talk about all kinds of things. And it, I, I really, I don't so much take offense to it, but it's not doom and gloom. Look. These are real life issues that are going down the pike. And my job is to alert my viewers. And if you see something that doesn't look, oh, I don't like her sensational. Look, all YouTubers have sensational, uh, even all the nomads, they're, they're sensational titles. It just is the way, if you had, if you had a, you, you don't understand if you don't have a YouTube channel, okay? If you do, you know what I'm talking about. Let me just say that. Yep. Okay, so what's next? Okay. This is from... Oh, I'll tell you. Reading glasses. Great invention. This is from Amos. Amos H. Do the windows stay up all night so no ventilation or breeze? You kind of stated that like, oh my gosh. And I said, no, <laughs> I don't open my windows. Why wouldn't I open my windows at night? <laughs> well, I don't want bugs coming in, that's why. Now in the winter, it wouldn't be so bad, but why would I want cold air to come in? And in the in, <laughs> in Arizona, have you seen some of the, some of the bugs that <laughs> are in Arizona, especially Southern Arizona? Okay, they've got sewer roaches in Arizona that are, I swear, are that big. 
They've got uh, Palo Verde beetles that are that big with pinchers on them. No, I'm not going to leave any windows open. Now, this window is cracked somewhat because I've got my solar coming through. But you no, know, I mean, I do find my, my... Okay, first of all, let me just say this. No vehicle is, is a sealed unit. <laughs> we would die in here if it was. No, there's ebb and flow that goes on in, in our vehicles. It's not a sealed unit. So there's there's always that. And I've got my fan going if, if I need it. So um, it's no big deal. Um, yeah. Okay, here's another one from Kathy Ann. It says, I think people who know how to live simply are the happiest people and have the least amount of stress. I agree. This is a very simple life. Now, sometimes it can get difficult. My video yesterday mentioned about driving around trying to find water because the water machine was broke at Walmart. The, the, There's only two Walmarts in Flagstaff and it was the main one. I don't know if it's still fixed. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we had to drive a little ways. We're still learning. We're still getting app, app, acclimated here. But um, it is a simple life. So the less that you own, I think, the more happier you are. I truly do. I mean, unless you're homeless and you don't even have your basic needs met. But my needs are met. Oh, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so thank you, Kathy Ann. Oh, oh, here's almost H also. Oh, you get, you get double here. I like the fairy lights. Can anybody tell me how they're powered? Well, I will tell you. You can power, you can get two types of uh, fairy lights. Now, the fairy lights that I got plugged in over here, let me show you. They're plugged in. These are the fairy lights right here. They go to here. It's a box. Now, I could put batteries in there, but I choose not to because I don't want to buy batteries. No, 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 no. But they also have, it's a wire that comes up. And so I can plug it in. That's USB powered. It's USB. And this is my Jackery 500 power station. So yeah, there you go. Now, what else did you ask? Where do they plug in into my Jackery and do they stay on for hours? Well, they could if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it's plugged in. I could run it in for hours and hours for sometimes, sometimes I do. If I'm gonna spend the day in here like it's on a Sunday and I wanna just kinda hunker in my little uh, clubhouse here, um, I might put on like a purple or something like that, but usually I don't. I've got them on now because it makes for good lighting for the filming, yes. Um, so yeah, and then what they, they're put on, they're on hooked on with these, um, and I've got them in my video description. There's these clips. The clips are pretty darn cool. Okay. Then, you know, these are, you know, these are normal questions that I'm sure some of you have already asked in your mind. And if you're not a nomad, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. In, in your mind, though, you think, well, what, wouldn't that be easier? Or wouldn't that be better? Well, if we were all sitting around and having a, um, a round table with other nomads, they would also answer these questions like, why don't you have a build out? Wouldn't it be easier? Well, we, as I've been doing this for six years, so everything that I have here has been tweaked. It hasn't always been like this, but over the past four years it has. The first couple of years, you're trying out different things all the time. You're seeing if this works or that works. What I find is best to tell, and I've written a book, How to Live in a Minivan, a Minivan Leeway, and I wrote that through experience. These are the things you're probably going to need. This is how your nomad life is going to go from beginning to getting yourself going, from the from the, the very thought that you might want to be a nomad, and I take you from that all the way, I'm totally organized. I'm almost really should have been a life coach or a teacher, but I take you all the way through to say, well, get yourself a notebook. These are things you need to write down to get yourself organized. Well, anybody that I talk to that's a new nomad, I tell them, hey, look, you're going to tweak things a hundred times until you get it right. Like 
I used to have, I brought a futon with me and I had it sitting right like there. And then I would, I had it going this way instead of this way. And I just, I would have something here and I learned it's not good there. I'm always going to bump into it there. I, everything that I have situated now has been working well. It took a while to get there, but it's been there. So when you say, well, wouldn't it be better? You're right. I mean, that's a good question. And that's why I'm answering this. It might be right for you because you're the one that's going to have to decide where you want to put things. You're going to have to live it. Any nomad, and if you're listening and you're a nomad or you were a nomad, you're going, yep, <laughs> yep, you're agreeing because that's the way it is. You've got to live it and then move things around. You're going to find it best for you. And everybody is different. I mean, we're all different, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, next one. Hey, Lee, you and Paul, since you were at Planet Fitness, you should have filled, you should have filled up your water there. Well, you should have, could have, would have. Yeah. I don't like when questions are posed that way. Like, why didn't you do it this way? Or you should have done. I don't, nobody wants to hear say, oh, you should have. It's like, well, should I have? You know, well, maybe you should have. <laughs> maybe you should have not asked it that way. So if you're going to ask me a question, I mean, not to get too, you know, technical, but if you, if you ask it in a, in a positive way, I really like it better. But I should have, huh? Well, why would I want to take in gallons of water into Planet Fitness? Everybody be like, watching me, no. You know, <laughs> you want to keep a good reputation there. You're going to be working out with the same people every day, right? No, I'm not going to take gallons of water in there. I might take a water bottle in there, but that's really all that I would do. <laughs> when we go into Walmart and get water, we have to take like two, three, four gallons of water in. I'm not going to do that at Planet Fitness. So there's your answer on that. Okay, Bob Locke. Hey, buddy. Lee, glad you're in cooler weather. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. It is so much nicer than hot 90s. Oh, yeah. Here on Long Island, high 40s at night. So nice sleeping. Sometimes I wake up and wonder where I'm parked. Have, have to think a bit, wondering, do you sometimes wonder where you are when waking up? Oh, yeah. Um, I haven't had it in a while, but yeah. In fact, I, I answered him and I said, look, I go, sometimes I'll be here watching a movie and I'll be so focused in on the movie that I'll do, uh, something will hit me going, where am I? Because our, our we, <laughs> it's not like we're in a house and we know that we're in the living room and right out there is that tree or whatever. Our location changes all the time. So literally, I could be editing a video and I'm so, I, it's like I've crawled into the, the um, video editing <laughs> app, right? And I'm going, where, all of a sudden it's like, where am I? Yes, it's, and I, I've woken up many and not, many mornings and thought, where am I? Oh yeah. Sometimes Paul will be parked on this side of me. And sometimes this part of me, side of me, and I'll just wake up and I'll go like that. Oh, he's gone. And I'll go, oh no. <laughs> or I'll forget which, which way I'm facing. And, oh yeah. So, uh-huh. And which is pretty cool though. If you think about it, that means that we get such a variety. Yeah. Okay. What do we have here from Angela Dawson? I was thinking that a sunroof would be useful at night. Leave the cover open and use the street lights for some lighting inside then. Well, actually, no. <laughs> I don't want light. Uh, you know, we, if we lose melanin, which is the, the chemical that gets us to sleep and keeps us asleep. If people keep waking up their insomnia, they have, um, they have melanin problems, right? So they're not producing enough. Well, when you turn on a light or you have bright lights or you have any kind of light, um, it will, if you have melanin and you've, the mel you've created melanin, the sun's going down, you're naturally, melanin is starting to build up and then it's making you sleepy. 
Well, the melanin is being destroyed by us looking at our phones all the time. That's why we want to put on the, the soft light, the soft blue light thing for at a certain po certain time of the day, we want to bring that down so that our melanin can start building up so we can get to sleep. A light up there coming in? Uh, no. I cover all my, um, yeah, and this was from the video of that. So I, I'm not sure why you would ask that because obviously I went to great pains to block out all the light. I do not want light coming in. And then again, I will reiterate, I don't want bugs coming down and crawling on me in the night. No, in Arizona in the summer, oh my gosh. You could just, you could literally, I've seen sewer roaches. In Arizona, we got the sewer roaches. They're nasty, they live in the sewer. They're huge. I've seen uh, really well, um, uber wealthy people in their hill, in their houses up in the foothills and to that, with, in the corner, there's a sewer, dead sewer roach. They get them too, because they come in. The sewers and they crawl around outside. It's not like they have a dirty home. They just come in. It's not like a German roach where they start um, increasing. Yeah. Okay, so I've seen them like on a building wall. I've actually seen them at the park. They'll be crawling along. Oh, they would definitely get up on my... They would get up on my tire and crawl around and come up here and drop it. <laughs> and sewer roaches fly. Oh my gosh. No, I'm not going to leave windows open. I'm not going to give any bug a chance to get and crawl on me. I would, maybe if I put a screen up, but you know, that might work. But no, not for, if there's lighting coming in, no, that would, that would have to be shut. So there's your answer on that one. I think that's about it. Let me just do a check. Oh, thank you for doing the video. Yeah, there will be. Um, there will be more videos about what's going on in the world. And I don't think it's doom and gloom. It's just what's happening. It's just what the way the world is going right now. There's a lot happening right now. Oh, my gosh. You got banking stuff. I mean, you know, and they're talking about the digital currency stuff. And then um, Sher uh, Sherry Hicks. Hey, Sherry. Um, I'm waiting for her to, she goes, did you hear about this one thing? I have people talking about it all the time. And the people that I hang with, we talk about this kind of stuff. So if it's not, not something that you want to uh, hear about, just pass it on by. Yeah, but I guarantee you, there are uh, millions of YouTubers talking about all of this stuff. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm going to just, that's the way that is. I did, I'm going to leave, look at the meal that I had today at the Senior Center. Oh my gosh, it was so good. That strawberry shortcake was, I'm actually full. It was so good. They actually had, it was um, uh, made from scratch. Um, uh, oh, I can't even think, whipped cream. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Yeah, it was a good, I've been going every day and um and it's okay because it's a good social time. Yeah. Um, Paul hasn't been there the past couple of days, but I want to go. And um, yeah, I've been meeting new people. It's a social event. I love it. So thank you for watching, everybody. Now, um, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I'm really going to ask you to subscribe. Thank you so much. And I'm going to ask you to share this video. There's some good information on, in here on about being a nomad and about the nomad life. So um, keep the questions coming. I, I will answer them. And uh, I just would, it would be nice if you didn't pose the question in such a negative way, like, well, why didn't you do it this way? I don't know, why didn't I? <laughs> and that's always my thing is like, I don't know, why didn't I? Well, because I didn't want to, you know, <laughs> I just didn't want to. So I hope this gives you insight to what the uh, nomad life is all about. And like I said, I got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Leeway. It's not expensive. It's a way to support me. And it's just, um, it's, it's good information for anybody getting ready for anything. As far as doom and gloom and some of those videos, there's always doom and gloom going on, hon. There really is. I mean, there could be a hurricane. There could be a tornado. There could be a, a pandemic. There could be mili um, uh, 
a martial law in your area and you want to get away from it. So you, you've already, because you followed what I said, you already have your vehicle ready with some bins in your garage and you threw them in, you threw your kids and your wife in there, or you threw your husband, your boyfriend, whatever, you dogged your cat and you got out of Dodge before it all went down. Look, these are times. So pre be prepared. So I hope you enjoyed this. And the book's going to help you to be prepared too. So I love you. I'm going to see you tomorrow. I really am. Bye.